Hello, this is R for Data Science Community, and we are going to cover Chaplin IT explanations, chat for average attribution from the Exploratory Model Analysis Book Club. The learning objective of this chapter is to introduce another approach to address the ordinary issue by averaging the value of the values attribution, attribution overall. Uh, at least the most of them, Impo impossible others. For example, if we go back to chapter six, if we see the break breakdown plots, and we randomly select 10 different orders, and we see all the plots right here, we, if we focus just in fair and class, we see that those values change a lot. And it's really hard to see, so I, I needed to, to make some lines. And even then I create this, this chart just to, to, to track that. Basically, the fur sometimes is really positive, but in some other cases it's negative. The same happened with class. So that could give you to misunderstanding. And in those in those areas, you don't have any any clue that that is happening. But what happens if we take all this variation and just take the mean? We see that the fair have this mean value that is really low but positive, and also the class have a little bit higher and it's also positive but if we play attention now to this new chart now we have both plots why because we are taking the mean of, of the 10 charts right than just creating one we take the mean and now we can create a bus plot and we see for the fair in the class that the bus plot are in both sides of the zero so it's like a a really straightforward, like a statistical test, and we know oh, we are not sure about what's the sign of this feature because we can see values in both sides of the zero. The chat description. So chat IT explanation. So this is the the letter that I used to to create that acronym, are based on the chat values developed by Chaplin. And that's a problem from the game theory. The problem comes like this. Some players cooperate and obtain a certain overall game from the cooperation. The cooperation might bring more benefit than individual action. So if the participants cooperate, they gain more than they would do if they just do it by themselves. And the problem is how to contribute to the general super plus among the players, if not all players are identical, it is the problem to solve. Basically, how we are going to distribute uh, that extra revenue that we achieve by co by applying a correct collaboration strategy, and that's really similar to the problem that we have with our features. Uh, exploratory variables are the players. The F plays at the role of the collaboration, while it's our strategy to collaborate. The payoff from the collaboration is the model prediction, and the problem to solve is how to distribute the model's prediction across particular variables. And here is the function that, that we use. And here are the parts. So P uh, with this sign, with the exclamation sign, is the, uh, the factorial. The total number of possible permutations or, or, or the nearings of these variables. So yeah. If you that's a really that number really increase really fast. Um, 
because the you don't get the same result for the same predicto unless you keep the same order. So yeah, it's a lot of combination that we need to take in consideration. The J, the, the capital J, is a possible permutation of the set of variables that are our predictors, including the model F. And the P, J, capita in the, in the J, set the indices for the variables that are positioned in the J before the a J variable. And the delta J suffix phi for our observation, particular observation, it's the variable importance measure of the J of the variables that have been used before. And basically, this is, in a, is in just an average. The point is that this sign and with J represent all possible combinations. So you will take the importance of your variable J in the particular position. And that, that's basically that they say, oh, I, I will take the, for example, we'll go to the, back to the 10 examples. I would take the first when it's in the fourth position. I would take the third when it's the first position, when it's the five position. So that's what they try to explain, that it doesn't matter which position you are taking the J. So you will take for all possible positions, and then you will take the average based on all the combinations. So this symbol represents the average importance measured across all possible ordinaries of exploratory variables. For a large P, we can use a Monte Carlo estimator. So we don't need to really compute all the combin all the permutations in all cases, especially you have many variables. Uh, that's the default for the package that we are using. It, these methods have some important properties. If two variables, whatever, J and K, ha, are interche in, interchangeable, then the Chaplin variable are equal. So yeah, they, they will have the same Chaplin value. That is really good. No as linear models that you take one and it correlates with each other, then you won't see the importance of both factors. Yeah, you you will be able to, to see them. If the exploratory variable J does not contribute to any prediction for any set of exploratory variables, then the Chaplin value will be equal to zero or really close to zero. If the model F is a sum of two models, J and Y, then the Chaplin value calculated for the model F is a sum of Chaplin values, the model J and Y. And the sum of Chaplin values is equal to the model prediction yeah, that is consistent with the breakdown plus and breakdown plus interaction that we have seen so far. So the interpretation is easy in that way. Uh, they continue the example with Johnny D. They just uh, made the example just with 25 uh, permutations. That is a really, really short proportion of all the seven factorial because we are uh, using seven variables. Yeah, I imagine it's like 5,000 uh, computation. They, they just pick that. So even though it's a uh, a short sample, it returns a really consistent result. And we will see in the coding example. And here are the result with the boss plot, and we see how the fair in the class also have a show that they, they are not really consistent. That is a really nice thing that because we don't we don't need to to guess that the, the plots show you the reality. And yeah, we can confirm, We I also have this plot that comes from the last chapter, 
And we can see, yeah, that the first class with fair 72 and class fair class, yes, is the post is positive, but not always. It's an important interactions. But even though with, with you don't see the interaction here, it's clear that you need to look for one. The pros and cons from the I I also summary for the prior chapters. No, no time consuming for large models. Yeah, the the breakdown plots are like that. They are really fast to compute. That's not the case for Shapiro values, even though they have some a special method for decision for for three base models. Uh, whatever it is computing expensive this the this kind of ways to interpret models all of them are easy to understand uh, it's not good for model with interaction so you need to go back to the in bridge bridge and blocks with interactions and here to about positive about fast positive finding yeah the boss plot will help you to avoid that, those situations. So I will start making this and then I will go back to the interactions if I see something that maybe doesn't make more sense in our variables. And any of them are easy to understand for large number of variables. So you have maybe more than 20 or maybe 30 variables to, to extract will be hard you to to really understand what is going on with your model with all these variables. And here's the coding example. So we are picking our data, input data, the, the data that we use to train the model, the Titanic random forest. Also, we pick the model and the person that we want to, to validate. Then we create the explainer using the using the explain function and we confirm that we can apply the predict because that's the the, the predict function that the explainer we're going to use then we can pass our explainer our observation and select the type shap for this particular and we can see the summary of the results. I was exploring this variable. It's, it's, it's printing the, the summary, but it's not returning the summary. So it really is a data frame and it have all the values to, to compute the bus plot. But I wasn't able to find the print function that the data is using to print this result. Because what I don't like about this is it is it, not in the important order. And yeah, and here we can just use the plot function. Uh, and we can, by default, the chop plots is activated, but you can also play to false and if you don't want to see the, the, the boss plot that is, yeah, maybe you want to share this chart with a stakeholder. They want no one to see the the boss plot. They will ask what is that, and maybe they won't understand that. But you can use this without them. I also put side by in the other side the the plot that they have in the book. We see that the class one have less variation. I think in my in my in my sample in a particular case, but the fair now is negative. Even though, yeah, we you see that there are some positive values, the mean was placed in the negative side rather than the positive side. Maybe that was the most interesting change. between. But even though the, the permutation used to compute this and we didn't use the same zip, yeah, they are really consistent. And um, yeah, that's it. I don't know you have something, any doubt or you want to go back to any slide. Uh, 
Uh, Angel, I just have a comment. Um, it's interesting that now uh, we can have a, a, a visual confirmation of how consistent is the variable importance assigned to each of the to each of the features. Okay, because that's something that uh, we had doubts uh, when we were exploring the, the breakdown plots, even the interactive, et cetera, that we didn't know how accurate or how uncertain was that, that number. Now with the box plots, uh, you have a visual confirmation on how, how tight is that monitor on how wide can it fluctuate. So it's a good, uh, it's a good indication of which uh, variables are the ones that consistently uh, pushes the mean, you know, to the to the to the positive side or to the negative side. Yeah, that that that's really amazing. You know, that, yeah, you you know that yeah, if fair class is consistent. You know that increase your possibility to survive in this model. Um, you are certain about most of the variables. You just know that oh, we have some doubt for the for few of them. You know. And we might not take certain decisions based on that. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, just comment uh, on something you said earlier, Angel, uh, about interactions with with the Shapley uh, technique. It's not it's not great for capturing the the interactions, and we we saw that with fair in class, you know, um, individually not looking very important, I think, in this chapter, whereas in chapter seven, when we were looking at the the breakdown plots with interactions, I think the fair class interaction was a pretty, pretty big one. I'm just wondering, you're right that this technique doesn't pick up on interactions very well, but like, if you were to you know, manual, like if you had a tree-based ensemble model, like a random forest or, you know, XG boost, you include, you explicitly include some of these interactions. I, I'm wondering then, you know, if, if this would be picked up, if that makes sense. Like if you explicitly made predictor variables to capture some of the, some of the interactions, I, I would think that maybe the Shapley would be better at picking that up then. Yeah, could be, you know, because you are you are yeah, you are that feature engineering, you know, like the maybe the 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 method doesn't doesn't cover that, but you do it in your preprocessing, yeah. I think that would be useful. And we also would be really good because I imagine if the if your interactions is more important than the other variables, you will see it. Oh, the interaction yeah. It's more correlated with the results and explain better the result than the individual variables. Yeah, yeah. Just talking out loud with that. I, I don't know if it would work well or not with those tree-based models. Since, you know, because those you don't normally have to specify interactions and they still pick up uh, a lot of different interaction types. Uh, but, I, you know, you know, it'd be an interesting thing to, to test. Um, I'm not sure if, folks here on this call if, if really use Shapley values, I can say that I haven't and it really in the in the real world there. Um, but yeah, one one idea for potentially trying to, to capture the, the interactions if you want to use this technique. Yeah, that's that's a good one. And also as decision trees and three bay model those same care about uh, for example correlated variables so that won't affect your predictions even though it's mm -hmm. not maybe significant that won't a, a pre, uh, that won't affect your predictions and you will be able to, to extract some extra interpretations and you know maybe the to 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 find out which are the important you can you will be able to go back to the seven uh, to the interaction plots to see what the, uh, the interact, and then you manually create them, and then you confirm mm -hmm. with the Chaplin ones. That would be also an interesting part. So I know that the Chaplin showed me that there is an inconsistency in some variables. Let me also check my interaction plot. If, oh, this, this seems to be important. Let's see, add that 
manually and then see is consistent with this with the with this process. Yeah. I, I think that with these two plots, uh, with the interaction and the chaplet ones, we were really more uh, like sure about the decision that we would take about each interaction of if concept because yeah, it's like bootstrapping, you know. It's like bootstrapping our mm -hmm. it's it's really close to that, to that method. You you brought up a really interesting point. Uh, just a minute ago there, Angel, about the like highly correlated predictors. Um, you know, if you did have predictors that were like, say, 90, 95% correlated, I, I'm not quite sure how that shakes out here on these plots. You know, like, is it kind of random how, you know, maybe one of the, one of the predictors shows up as a variable, uh, extremely important Whereas the other highly correlated one falls to the bottom. They I, explain I would... here uh, the, uh, interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are really correlated. I mean, so, but that's what I interpret, you know, uh, interchangeable. So okay. they should have equal, equal value. So I'm expecting they are really high correlated. They should be one next to the other. What I could do is well, that's that's good. That's what you would hope, right? Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I kind of, <laughs> I'd kind of like to test that. I feel like you could do a, a simulation there. Right. Uh, the, the problem is that I would need to train the model, you know, to add that variable. Right. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was thinking to 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 make the test really quick. But yeah, that would be a really interesting situation. But I that's that's the property that they explain in the in the method yeah that you're right you I, I i mean I, I read that part uh that passage as well i just i didn't i guess maybe i wasn't really thinking about correlation but you're right if they're interchangeable that, that basically denotes that they're the same thing they're highly correlated right exactly yeah i mean mm -hmm. uh, they're highly correlated so you don't need to worry about oh this is highly correlated and, and that would disappear that happens with the linear model you know in this yep. case, so you are, yeah, you are expecting a really consistent way. If the, your tree model doesn't supreme that variable, also your explanation doesn't do it as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, if I if I have um some free time this week, maybe that would be a good thing to just to verify, right? Just kind of on a toy example. Um you know, with, you know, just make some, some highly correlated predictors and make sure that like the Shapley values are, are essentially the same. Yeah. That would be really nice. If you can yeah, post in the, in our channel. Yep. Yep. So yeah, okay. I, I thought to create this table so you can maybe as we go in the chart and maybe we'll be able to date them. I decided to always put the 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 pros, that, so yeah, it's, it, it, I think it's easier to read that. Oh, these do that, and the other doesn't. So the the mm -hmm. ones that have more ads always is the better one in that situation. Yep. Well, so, I, yeah. I think I think this group kind of verified last week that I, I don't think any of us had really heard or at least hadn't worked with the the breakdown plots. Um, the the Shapley you know, seems to be pretty popular these days. Um, you, even though I haven't used it personally, like, you know, anytime you're just reading about interpretable machine learning, like Shapley values come up all the time. So yeah, I think it's, yes, in, in all interpretable tools, is there, you know, like this topic is, is really an essential one. Yep. I think there is no more questions. I think I will stop. And see you next week.